Hello and welcome to another video game review. Today we're going to be going over uh, Dragon's Dogma. Just like in those previous reviews, I'm going to be uh, reviewing Dragon's Dogma against the same five categories. And remember, if it gets three out of the five categories, then it is going to get a recommendation. Uh, if it gets anything less than three out of five, then it doesn't get a recommendation. Those five categories are mechanics and innovation, visuals and aesthetics, Longevity and replayability, is it memorable, and the cost to enjoyment factor. Without further ado, I'm going to kick it off going into mechanics and innovation. In this category, I'm going to give the game a point. Okay, So, the mechanics and innovation for Dragon's Dogma, the reason it gets this, is because this is one of those games where I think it was really ahead of its time. It introduced a new system, most notably the pawn system. When you pick up the game and get like not even 30 minutes into it, you're going to be running into the system and the way it kind of affects your gameplay, your team builds, and everything else like that. No other games really implemented this, especially from like a multiplayer aspect, the way Dragon's Dogma does. And I think that's what is currently, in 2024, building a lot of the hype going into the next Dragon's Dogma. The vocation system is nothing really new, but it is something they did really well. And that paired with your pawn system allows you to really like flush out a good team build. And for those who don't know, the vocation system is essentially your class system. And so you pick your initial starting class and then from there you can kind of like build up into more advanced classes. A part of that is the advanced classes you can do for your pawns as well. They also have access to the vocation systems, same as you. And so when other players summon your pawn into their world, they get access to all the abilities and everything they have while that pawn is in their world. The player itself doesn't get that, but the pawn does. This has both a pro and a con for like long-term gameplay and enjoyability of the game, though. So if you are using like your buddy's pawn or some, you know, a friend from Steam or PlayStation Network or Xbox Live, you know, whatever you're playing on. That one drawback is is if they don't continue playing the game and they kind of just leave their pawn where it's at, you're stuck with a pawn that is only as far along as it was when they left off. And by that I mean like it's going to be at the same level and they're not going to get any new gear unless you give them new gear. Unfortunately, they still won't level up. So that is one kind of downside with the pawn system. But at the same time, a little bit of a balancer to that is when it comes to the pawn system, you can only swap that pawn out with another one. With the exception of your main pawn. That one you use. You have that one throughout the whole game, but that one does level up with you. And that is something to keep in mind. If you watch my whole gameplay series, which is still up on my channel, you will see that for a good chunk of it, I had a pawn that was a much higher level than me. And that was a, a gift from a viewer who came over on Twitch whose name was uh, Incoherent Knight. He was like, hey, here's my pawn. It's level 100 and something, right? Knock yourself out. Which helped getting through, helped me with getting through the game, right? Unfortunately, for those of you who like to like, truly experience it and grind through the game, this kind of thing can be like a little bit of a deal breaker because it feels a little bit like cheating. But when you go through and you're playing the game and you're selecting your pawns, that's something to really keep in mind. None of that's really a deal breaker for me, which is why I'm still giving it a point in this category. Visual and aesthetics is unfortunately a category I am not going to give Dragon's Dogma a point in. And that is because I firmly believe that for the time the game was released, the texture detail and the graphics really aren't that good. It's really bland. And it's it's kind of bizarre because it's like they took like a really small color palette and then crammed everything in the game into that one color palette. It makes foresty areas really stand out, but it makes mountainy areas and dealing with like bigger enemies kind of like dull because they just end up looking like giant piles of earth, be it the cyclops or like the mountain golems or anything like that. Granted, Mount Golems, you'd expect that to a degree. You don't expect it with every other enemy. 
I will say in its defense, it does make certain magic abilities and vocational abilities really pop. But when you're traveling around going through like Grand Soren and other like villages and whatnot, it, it just, it can be almost immersion breaking in some areas just because of how dull it ends up looking. Longevity and replayability is a category I'm actually going to give Dragon's Dogma another point in. That is uh, primarily due to the fact that there is things to do post-game. There's actually a dedicated post-game area to this game, uh, most notably the Everfall. It's a great little in-game area where you can go, you can go fight the Ur Dragon. Also, I'd like to kind of point out here that my information that I put in my gameplay series on the Ur Dragon is a little bit incorrect, and I highly recommend going and reading up on the wiki for that. It can explain it much better than I can. But regardless, the game has uh, new playthrough features with the same character and pawn and everything. You can keep all your gear. So you can go back through in like a New Game Plus kind of scenario and really experience the game in a different manner. You can romance different characters in the game. You can choose to uh, do different options with the dragon towards the end. You know, all, all these things kind of like really pair together in the experience. Oh, and if you did what I did and just play through the main campaign, you can go back through and do the uh, Dragon's Dogma DLC, which from everyone who's played through it, highly recommends. I've only ever played through the base game. Uh, maybe I'll do a uh, replay through on the DLC, but I uh, don't really have plans to do it at this point in time. Now onto the next category, is it memorable? I am once again giving it a point. This game has a very unique story and a very unique world. From the moment you start off, you're getting your heart ripped out by a dragon, and then you're on some weird quest with a, a soulless pawn. Name another game like that, and don't say Dragon's Dogma 2. It's literally the sequel. It, of course, it's going to be similar. But my point is, you remember the unique experience this game provides. Ask anyone that played it back in the day on PS3 and Xbox 360. Now on to the cost to enjoyment factor. Again, this category can be a little subjective, but it is one I graded against on its price, especially at the time of recording. As of right now, the game with the DLC is 30 bucks. You easily get your money's worth out of playing this game. It's, it's a little bit shorter, unfortunately, but the experience it gives you, it's a, it's a little bit like experiencing like a really nice piece of art, you know? It's got like its very own kind of niche world and all that. And for for the price to entry, that's pretty low. Plus, it's something you can kind of uh, talk to your friends about who have also played and really get their tell on like how they played through it and experienced it. So at 30 bucks in the current pricing, I think it's a pretty good value. Personally, this is one I would still pay full price for as I did back in the day. I didn't regret it then when I bought it on PS3 without the DLC, and I don't regret it now. So, wrapping it up before I get into final notes, that leaves uh, my review of this game with a total of 4 out of 5 points. That gives it a solid thumbs up for me, and uh, definitely one of my more highly recommended games, especially if you are an RPG lover. And you can see here kind of how it compares against the other games that I reviewed up till now. On to some final notes. I give the game a 4 out of 5 today, but had I reviewed it back in uh, back in the day when it came out on PS3 and 360, what I had originally played it on, I likely would have given it 3 out of 5, and that's purely because of the performance the game had on release. If you ever played it back on PS3 and 360, you know that it was had some pretty bad frame rates, and that's despite the graphics being set to what they are. <clears throat> I don't know what was going on with the game engine back then, but it had some struggles keeping up. Fortunately, with the PC release and time progressing forward, the game has aged really well. Hence kind of the 4 out of 5, right? If you are looking for something new, though, that is very different from any other RPG you've ever played where you can go and fight crazy mythical creatures like you can in, let's say, Monster Hunter New World, then this game is for you. It's not as long and as enduring as Monster Hunter, but it is really good, and it is something that you can walk away with going, yeah, okay, 
I enjoyed that. Oh, and uh, port crystals. Don't forget to use port crystals. That was a mistake I made. I forgot about those being added with the Dark Arisen DLC. And it's definitely something you should remember to place in areas that are far away. Because this game does not give you mounts. And if you're into just riding along the countryside, ignoring everything, you're going to struggle in this game. This game is a very densely packed world with stuff to do in it. So they want you to walk everywhere. And that's kind of what makes part of the, I don't know, environment really unique is it's not like Oblivion or Skyrim where you're walking along a road. And you could be walking for 20 minutes and you never see anyone. You might see a stranger pass by, but you're not really going to run anything. Dragon's talking about you're getting ambushed left and right. It makes for some long trips. Half the game is walking the places, unfortunately. But it's not just about the destination in Dragon's Dogma. It's also about the journey. And that is uh, where I'm going to end this uh, review. Kind of leaving it at the whole, uh, yeah. Enjoy.